Welcome back everyone, I'm Paul Holloway and on today's video, we're going to make a transfer correction. If the surface of your calibration block isn't representative of the surface condition of your test piece, or if your calibration block hasn't been heat treated the same as your test piece, then your procedure may require you to do a transfer correction. Let's, for example, say that during this inspection, I am going to use a five megahertz, half inch round transducer mated to a 60 degree wedge. What I need to do is first find the twin for this probe. It has to be exactly the same frequency, size, and uh, wedge angle. Now we need these probes to talk to each other. In order to do that, we need to turn the machine to pitch and catch or through mode. Then what we're going to do is take the transducers. In this case, I'm going to use my calibration block on the side and we'll make sure we've got lots of couplings away from any reflectors that are in the calibration block. And we're going to build a distance amplitude curve. As you can see, our first point is one pass through the block at 60 degrees. And then what we'll do is we'll take one of the probes and flip it around to the other side. Make sure we've got lots of coupling on there. And we will draw the letter V at 60 degrees. And this will be our second point. And then we'll take this probe and we'll flip it back around to the other side. Use up all that good coupling we had there before. And we will add our third point. Now that we've drawn our three point DAC, assuming we've got enough range in there, we can get rid of our calibration block and bring over our great big heavy test piece. So take your two probes, put them down on your test piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to fire the sound out of one, bounce off the bottom, come back up to the top and catch up with the other one. So we're going to just make the letter V, take a rigid guide like a ruler. This is really important to try to keep the two probes lined up as well as possible. And then move one probe back and forth along the ruler until we find our peak, which is about right there. And here we can see at the upper part of the screen where the measurements are, the gate one peak percent reference is 68.4% and gate one peak DB to reference is minus 3.3. So in this case, our transfer correction would be 3.3 decibels. So the minus in front of the 3.3 means that our test piece is soft. It's too quiet by 3.3 decibels. So during examination, what we need to do is add 3.3 decibels to all of our readings in order to bring it back up to reference with the calibration block. A couple things to remember when you're doing a transfer correction is make sure that your calibration block thickness will allow you to make a DAC that's big enough so that your indication from your test piece will land somewhere in the middle of the DAC. In this case, I've got three points on my DAC and the, the thickness of the test piece was five eighths and the thickness of the calibration block was three quarters. So there's no problem there. But of course you wouldn't want to use say a quarter inch calibration block and then try to do a transfer correction on a one inch piece of plate. You wouldn't do that anyways, but just food for thought. And you have to use matching transducers uh, and it, you also have to use the right frequency. So if you're inspecting with five megahertz, you need to use a five megahertz transducer for your transfer correction. The reason being is that sound at different frequencies attenuates at different rates. So they have to match. So that my friends is how you do a simple transfer correction. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.